the fuzzy dice hanging from the mirror. We know this is a dynamics problem because I'm giving you forces, I'm asking you for another force, the tension, and I'm asking you for acceleration. There's no time involved, so kinematics are out. Energy and momentum are not central to this. So as soon as we know that this is a dynamics problem, we panic and then relax because we do know because although there are no equations for this, we do know the vector sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. And so we go in and we draw the two forces, or just two, and one of the things that's important to note is that the force on a rope is always in the same direction as the rope itself. If this is the free body diagram, then the tension and the force of gravity make that same angle. And then I ask myself that very important question. Yes, this whole thing is accelerating horizontally. So if acceleration is horizontal, the vector sum of the forces, the net force, has to be horizontal too. And so when I add these together, I make sure that the sum of the forces is in this direction. And yeah, if you wanted to, you could say the sum of the forces in the x direction is mass times acceleration in the x direction. And then the only force in the x direction is the horizontal component of the tension. And the sum of the forces in the y direction are zero, and you solve those two equations. Either way, you end up with a tangent of 20 degrees is the force of gravity over the net force. And you'd also find that the sine of 20 is the force of gravity over the tension. So although you only know the force of gravity, by knowing these angles, you can find the tension, it's about 6 newtons, and the net force, which yields an acceleration of about 2.7 gravities, or 27 meters per second squared. So how realistic is this acceleration? It's almost three times the gravity. And so the first challenge that comes to mind is it's going to be very difficult to get that traction. And you can do it with dragsters where they spin their tires out at the beginning of a race to put down a hot layer of rubber so it's sticky. But we don't normally have that on the road. But we can do a power calculation. Because we know the acceleration of the mass, we can get the force. And we, let's say, estimate at two seconds. So power is change in energy over change in time, and we could find the kinetic energy at two seconds, but this is the average power, right? The initial power is going to be zero because it's not moving. The instantaneous power is force times velocity. And so the force is mass times acceleration is 27 kilonewton, and the acceleration times time is 54 meters per second. What's that about? That's like 120 miles an hour in two seconds. That's a sports car. When we multiply them together, we get 1,500 kilowatts. And so what's that in horsepower? A good thing to remember if you get confused about changing units is you can always multiply by one. So I can always multiply by 750 watts in one horsepower. Now I can do that because this is just one. This wouldn't help me though because I mixed it up. So if I turn it around like this, and say it's 750 watts in one horsepower. Now I'm good, and I can cancel the watts with the watts. 750, this gives me two, and I've got 2,000 horsepower. Okay, so a normal car is between 100, 200 horsepower maybe. So 2,000 horsepower, that's a pretty unreal car.